Hi, good day everyone. With me again, Lady Trialdi in Introductory Macroeconomics class. After all the talks about the real sector, now let's turn our attention to the financial sector in macroeconomics. We will examine the financial institution that make up the financial system, the source and the use of funds there, as well as the market mechanism in the financial system. Understanding what the financial system is and how it works will be crucial to help us comprehend its role in an economy. Let me begin by showing you a simple diagram of the financial system. There are two main financial institutions, namely financial markets and financial intermediaries. The two institutions will match lenders who have excess funds to lend and borrowers who need funds to borrow. The difference is that through financial markets, funds will be channeled directly. A company may issue bond or sell stocks in the capital market and gets funds from the transaction. Or a bank may get an overnight loan from other banks in the money market. On the other hand, with financial intermediaries, borrowers do not get the funds directly. Funds may be collected in a bank or in a credit institution before being loaned out. Or a collection of stocks or bonds or combination of the two may be pulled by mutual funds before being sold to raise funds. In an economy, Lenders are savers because what they lend is their saving or income that they don't spend or use for consumption. Since we are in macro perspective, saving can only finance investment, not consumption. With aggregate or macro perspective, lending money to finance someone else's consumption is exactly like the person consumes using their own money. It would mean more consumption in the economy and less saving. Because of this as well, what we call borrowers in an economy are only investors or those who need money to do capital investment, not consumption. So, the bond market, the stock market, banks and mutual funds basically serve the role of coordinating the economy's saving and investment. Before we proceed, please recall what microeconomics means with investment. Investment here is private investment. Government investment is excluded or private sector's purchase of capital goods. As a consequence, when a government is running a budget deficit to build an infrastructure, for instance, it won't add to the nation's investment, but it rather adds to the nation's saving, as I will explain soon after this. Furthermore, depositing money in banks and purchasing some stock and bond in the capital markets are part of the nation's saving, not investment in macroeconomics. Yes, you invest your money financially, but there is no single purchase of capital goods. On the other hand, it should be clear that when a company borrows from banks or sells some stock or bond in capital market to build a new factory, for instance, it will add to the nation's investment. In the previous topic, we know that both savings and investment are key ingredients to long-run economic growth. Greater saving means greater investment in capital, and higher capital raises a country's productivity and living standard. Why does higher saving lead to higher investment? Well, in a closed economy, we have to know this identity. Saving is equal to investment in the equilibrium. It comes from this simple national income identity equation, remember? Finding investment by uh, moving C and G to the left like this will give us national saving. Clear, isn't it? Then, I can include taxes to our equation and express national saving like this. The inclusion of taxes doesn't change the equation because we are subtracting and adding to the equation exactly the same taxes. But look, now we have two new expressions here. The first bracket shows the excess disposable income that is not spent by household or the household saving while the second bracket is government's budget surplus that represents the public saving. Okay, after we identify saving and investment in national income account, now I'm going to explain about how the financial market works to coordinate an economy, saving, and investment. To keep things simple, we assume that the economy has only one financial market called the market for loanable funds. All savers go to this market to deposit their saving, and all borrowers go to this market to take out their loans and do investment. And like other markets in the economy, 
The economy's market for loanable funds is governed by supply and demand. Well, we already have both. We have saving, including private and public saving, as the sources of the supply of loanable funds, and investment from both firms and households as the source of the demand for loanable funds. Another element in the market is real interest rate or the nominal interest rate corrected for inflation, which is both the real return to saving and the real cost of borrowing. Real interest rate represents the real return to saving, so it is the incentive for saver. The higher the interest rate, the more willing the savers to save. With this positive correlation, the supply curve is an upward sloping curve. On the other hand, the demand curve is downward sloping because investment is negatively correlated with real interest rate. Lower interest rate will increase the demand for a loanable fund because lower rate means lower cost of uh, borrowing for investors. Market for loanable fund is in equilibrium condition when demand and supply curves intersect at certain real interest rate and certain amount of loanable fund like this. How does the market for loanable fund work? Well, it must, be, it must be similar with how other markets work. First, whenever equilibrium is not yet achieved, or when real interest rate is higher or lower than its equilibrium rate, there will be movements along the supply curve and along the demand curve. These are the movements when the rate is higher, and these are the movements when the rate is lower. They are moving to reach the equilibrium position because of the excess supply or excess demand. Second, equilibrium position will change if there is a change in supply, demand, or both because of non-interest rate factors. Saving is not only affected by real interest rate. Government may provide tax incentive, for instance, to encourage private savings. In this case, nation saving will increase at any given real interest rate, or the supply curve will shift to the right. Look, the new supply curve will intersect the demand curve at a new point, at a lower equilibrium real interest rate. In other situations, government may run a budget deficit policy. Remember from my explanation at the beginning, no matter whether the net spending is for government consumption or investment, the policy affects saving. Budget deficit policy reduces public saving. Therefore, what happens now is nation saving will decrease at any given real interest rate and the supply curve will shift to the left leading to a higher equilibrium real interest rate. Similar to the supply, the demand for loanable fund is not only affected by real interest rate. Demand for investment may be affected by unstable political situation, or maybe again because of the government policy, such as investment tax credit policy or tax holiday policy that gives incentive to do investment. In either case, the demand curve will shift. With unstable political situation, demand shifts to the left and the equilibrium real interest rate will be lower. On the other hand, with the incentive policies, demand shifts to the right resulting in higher equilibrium real interest rate. So, that's it. The last thing that I would like to explain is about the possible crowding out effect from the government net spending. You know, when a government is running a budget deficit, it crowds out funds for private investment to finance the deficit. With lower nation saving, supply of loanable fund is lower, and from my previous explanation, the supply curve shift to the left will increase equilibrium real interest rate. And the result is, private investment will be lower as shown in the diagram here. The reduction in private investment here is the crowding out effect. Okay, that's all from me. We have examined the financial institution that make up the financial system and how both financial intermediaries and financial market coordinated saving and investment in economy. The development of the simple model of market for loanable funds further add our knowledge about how the market works and how certain government policy or certain event affects it. Thank you for your attention. See you again in other videos with different basic macroeconomics topics.